Hello everyone, this is Belal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. So in the last video, we created this retrofit client object in Kotlin. Now in this video, we will code our first screen, which is the user registration screen. So I will not waste the time in designing the interface, but I will copy the design code from the last tutorial series. So I already have the code given into the GitHub. So you need to copy the code of activity main.xml. So I will copy everything. Copy everything. And paste it here. So a design is created. And we have something missing, which are the icons. So icons and colors are missing so we can get it from our code first let's get the colors so i will get all the colors and i will paste it in our values folder colors.xml inside this file i will paste all the previous colors so we have the colors only the icons are remaining so you can get the icons but at this time i don't care about the icons so I will delete these things. You can put the icons if you want. So we are not using icons for now. So the design is okay. We I think we need to hide this app bar. So for this you need to go to styles and make it no action bar. So this is our activity main.xml and the design is created. It is a very nice design. Now, uh, one more thing we need to do is we need to organize our code. So we will create a package for our activities. And we will create a package for our models. Now these models are the classes that only stores data. For example, this response, this response, we will create a class to store this response. So we will put all the classes that we use to store data inside this models package. Then we will create one more package named API and we will create more if required. So the API and the retrofit client, we will push it inside API. So just drag it to API and refactor. Now we now we will put the main activity to activities and refactor. And I think everything is good. We have activities, we have API, we have retrofit client. Now come to main activity. And the first thing that we will do is we will attach a click listener to our button. So the button ID is sign up, button sign up. And the best thing about Kotlin is you do not need to use find view by ID anymore. So we will simply write button sign up dot set on click listener. Nice. Now here we will perform the user registration. So let's do it. The first thing that we need is we need to perform the validations. So first we need to get the values from the edit text. So we have edit text, email, password, name and scoop. So let's do it very quickly. We have val email equals to edit text email dot text dot to string dot trim. Nice. The same way we will get password, name and school. So we have password. We have name. And we have school. So we have edit text password. Edit text name. And edit text school. Now, if you want, you can add validations as we did in the Java series. So let's add it. So we'll write if email is empty. So if the email is empty, 
we will write edit text email dot error equals to email required and we will write return on click listener so we will stop the further execution the same way we will add validations for all the field and one more thing we need is edit text email dot request focus so we will do the same for all the values so copy and paste we have four so first is email then we have password So we have added the validations for all the values. Now you can add more complex validation if you want, but this is only an example. Now, if the validation passes, we will register the user. And to register the user, we need to define this call, which is create user and it is a post request. So for this, we will go to our API interface and here we will define a post. Now the post is create user and if you are using a post you need to define it as form URL encoded. Now here we will define a function and we will name this function as create user and the return type of this function would be call and make sure you are using this retrofit to call and we need to define the response type and the response is error and message so we need to define a model class and in kotlin we call it a data class so let's define a kotlin class and we will name it let's say default response and this is a data class so we will write data class default response and here we will define we have error and message so we have error of type boolean and then we have message of type string so we have our data class ready now make sure you have to give the same variable names as you have in the json key values so the key values of json and the variable name should match if you don't want to give the same name then you need to define the JSON key by using serialized name annotation. Let's say we have serialized name error and then you can name your variable anything. But in this example, I am going to use the same names. So I have a data class default response and I have error and message. Now I will use this default response class as the type of our call. So I have default response, nice. Now to this function, I need to pass email name, password and school. So I have a field email, email of type string. Then I have a field which is name and it is also a string and then we have password and school so we have password password and then we have school school so we have a call create user and the type of the call is default response now we will use this call to register the user into the database so come back to main activity and here we will use this retrofit client object to get the retrofit object. So here we will write retrofit client dot instance dot create user. We will call the method that we just created inside API 
and we will pass all the values so we have to pass email and then name and then password and then school and then I write it like this and then we will NQ it NQ so we will NQ it now NQ take a callback and make sure you are using retrofit callback because we have so many callbacks here you see but we need to find the callback from retrofit yeah this callback so we will use this callback interface and we will define the type as our model class that we created or data class that we call in Kotlin so we have callback of type default response and then we have to implement the method so press alt enter and then implement members and implement both the methods that's it now inside on failure we can display error message so, so let's display it so we have toast make text application context we will get the error from this throwable object so we have message and then length of the toast and then show now we will use the same thing here so we will get toast dot make text application context we will get the response body and then we will get the message from the response because inside our model class which is our response we have message so we can display this message and then the length of the toast and then show the toast that's it now finally we need to add the internet permission so let's add it into the manifest so we have user users permission internet we have the inter internet permission now the last thing that we need to change is we need to change this local host to the actual IP now if you are running in your actual device then make sure your device is connected with your computer using hotspot and then if you are using a MacBook then you can easily find the IP by going to network preference preferences and here you can see the IP if you are using a windows you can type the command ip config in your command prompt to get the ip so we will use this ip here instead of local host now let's run the application and see if it is working or not so this is the application guys let's try running it so let's put an email let's say ab at the rate ab.com password let's click on sign up and you see we are getting communication to this is not permitted by network policy so this is a new update guys and due to this we cannot send request directly to an http url so our url has to be https so this is a new update in android but you can also send request to http urls by doing this thing So if you want to send request to HTTP URL, what you need to do is you need to go to Android manifest.xml and here you need to define use clear text traffic and you need to define it as true. Now it can send request to HTTP URLs as well. So let's run this application and see it is working or not. So let's enter some email. Let's say Bilal at the rate gmail.com password school. Now click on sign up. And you see we are getting user created successfully. Now, if you will check your database, 
we have the values and the password is encrypted someone asked me that why password is like this because we don't store password directly so sensitive information we need to encrypt so that's why it is an encrypted format so that's all for this video friends i hope you found it helpful and you can get the source code from the link that is given in the description of this video and i hope you found this video helpful for any kind of question you can leave your comment and if you want to help me please share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel and help me to gain more subscribers so thank you guys this is Bilal Khan now signing off